Hey everyone, Nathan from Elegant Themes here. In this tutorial, I'm going to be giving you an overview of Extras Theme Options. To get to Extras Theme Options, you'll need to go to the Extra menu in your WP Admin and go to Theme Options. So this page is also known as the ePanel. So you might hear that referenced in other videos, in blog posts, etc., documentation. Um, if someone ever says ePanel, what they mean is Extra Theme Options and vice versa. All right, so within extra theme options, we have seven tabs here. General settings, navigation settings, uh, layout settings, ad management, SEO, integration, and support docs. I'm gonna run through them one by one and just show you what's possible um, and what they control. Okay, so here in general settings, the very first thing is logo and favicon. So logo obviously is this logo right here. And your favicon is the little icon that appears uh, next to your site title in the tab of your browser. So you can enter, you can add images for both of those here or reset back to the default. Below that, you can adjust your global accent color. So this is something that uh, is also in the theme customizer, but you can uh, change it here as well. Next up, we have the fixed navigation bar. So this is where we can make a quick edit to our fixed navigation bar. We can either enable it or disable it. For those of you unsure what the fixed navigation bar is, it's on the front here when you scroll down and the navigation bar fixes to the top of the page, that's your fixed navigation. You can choose to enable or disable this here. All right, going down the page still further under general settings, we have our sidebar location that you can choose. You can choose to have your sidebar on the right, left, or no sidebar. And this is your this is what determines your default sidebar location. You can also choose your uh, default sidebar location for WooCommerce. And you can also decide which sidebar slash widget area um, is your default here as well. So we've chosen the main sidebar as the default. WooCommerce sidebar slash widget area, you can choose that here. So I actually had to create a new widget area that I named WooCommerce and then I set that as my WooCommerce sidebar. And finally down here, we can choose how often to refresh social follower counts. Three hours, 12 days, one day, three day, seven days. Okay, moving on down. Here you see that we have a lot of enable or disable um, Facebook, Twitter, social icons. So what do these actually do? These are for enabling or disabling viewing these icons on your home page. Moving down, you can also choose uh, which of these profiles are displayed in your header and footer down here. So what I've done, and this is something that you can adjust within the themes uh, customizer as well. What I've done is only just put a couple pound symbols in here just so that the icons show up, but you can add your credentials for a wide number of social networks, Facebook, Twitter, Google+, Pinterest, Tumblr, StumbleUpon, Instagram, YouTube, Dribbble, um, RSS, etc. cetera. And uh, those will be uh, profiles that show up and allow people to follow. Below that section, you can determine how many number of posts are displayed on archive pages, the number of posts displayed on search pages, the number of posts displayed on tag pages, as well as the default date format. And here we have a few more settings that you can enable or disable. You can choose to enable the use of excerpts when defined, responsive short codes, a back to the top button, which will be just uh, this right here when you scroll down, get a little back to the top indicator. Google font subsets and smooth scrolling. Finally, down here at the very bottom of your general settings tab, we have custom CSS. And this is where you can enter in custom stylings that will affect uh, your site in the same sort of general way that child theme CSS would, um, including that when you update your theme, uh, this CSS will not go away. It will stay exactly where it's at and continue to affect the styling of your website. Okay, uh, let's move on to the next tab here in the ePanel. So we're moving from general settings now to navigation. Within navigation, this is really where you're able to 
um, adjust menu settings and navigation settings uh, site-wide. So this is for pages, categories, and general settings. Under pages, you're able to exclude pages from the navigation bar, uh, show drop-down menus, uh, display your home link, and you're also able to change the way that you sort uh, page links. You can choose to order your page links by ascending or descending. And you can also limit the number of drop-down tiers that are shown uh, for pages. Literally all of the same things, uh, except for some of the sorting options, are the exact same for categories. And finally, in general settings, we're able to disable the top tier drop-down menu links. And what that means is when you click on a, like for instance, more doesn't go to any page, so I might want to disable that and only have it here as a placeholder to hold this, the rest of these options here below. All right, moving down to layout settings. So in layout settings, we have three tabs, uh, single post layout, single page layout, and general settings. So I can choose to enable or disable different metadata for my uh, posts. I can choose to show comments or not on posts. And I can choose which sharing icons to display by selecting or deselecting from this menu down here. All right, moving on to single page layout. I can choose to show comments or not here. And under general settings, uh, my post info section, I can, again, adjust some metadata here. And I can choose to have my uh, my default blog feed be standard or masonry. All right, moving on, ad management. So with extra ad management, we have um, four options here, or five options rather, header, below header, footer, above post, and below post. Uh, so under the header tab, I can enable a header ad. I can input advertisement image here, or I can input advertisement destination URL here, or I can enter in uh, AdSense code here. This remains the same for below header, footer, above post, and below post. All right, let's go to SEO. So in SEO, we have home page SEO, single post page SEO, and index page SEO. So here we can, under the home page SEO tab, enable custom title, enable meta description, enable meta keywords, and enable canonical URLs. And if you ever, uh, by the way, I know we're most of the way through here, but um, if anything ever confusing, you're not entirely sure what it does, um, you can always click these red help arrows and you'll get a nice short but um, useful explanation of what exactly that controls. All right, so moving down, we can create a custom homepage title. We can create a homepage meta description. And all these things are dependent on you enabling them up here. We can also uh, enter in homepage meta keywords. And we can enter in custom titles um, or choose auto generation method. We also define a character to separate the blog name and post title um, in search engines. OK, single post SEO. So a lot of these. It works the same way. There's some options up here to enable or disable. If you enable them, you can now go down here and start making some different settings. Uh, once again, this is starting from the bottom this time. Uh, character that you can define uh, to de separate your blog name and your post title. Uh, you can change the uh, auto generation method down here. You can also change, uh, or sorry, you can choose to add custom field name to be used for keywords, as well as custom field name to be used for description and a custom field name to be used for title. And this is on single post page. All right, finally, the index page SEO. So on the index page SEO, we can choose here to enable canonical URLs or enable meta descriptions. Now under uh, choose auto generation method, we can choose category name or blog name, blog name category name, or category name only. And again, a symbol to separate our blog name or post title. Okay, so finally we're getting down to our final tabs here on the right, or on the left side rather. So let's jump down to integration. 
code integration. So this is where we can um, enable some header code, enable body code, enable single top code, or enable single bottom code. So all of these are great for different types of tracking, JavaScript, um, just all kinds of scripts that you might want to run on your blog. You generally are going to want to put them either in your header, um, to the bot, add to the body, add to the top of your post, or add to the bottom of your post. These are kind of prime areas for these bits of codes or scripts to run. Um, and these are the spaces in which you'll put them. And after you do put them in there, um, making sure that the appropriate space is enabled, you just save it and that script or bit of code will be active. All right, finally, we have support docs. Not a lot to talk about here. If you need extra support docs and you want to read up on uh, different aspects of the extra theme, just go to read extra documentations here and that'll take you straight to our official documentation. All right, well, that's all for this tutorial. This has been an overview of extras theme options. If you have any questions about what we've gone over in this video, feel free to leave us a comment and we'll make sure that you get a response. If you're interested in learning more about Extra or seeing what it's capable of, you can click the View Demo button. If you're interested in seeing more Extra tutorials, click the Subscribe button and never miss a great tip. Thanks for watching.